Good evening, Wellspring Ministries. I'm greeting you here from my office and at home. I'm a little bit late this evening, but we seem to have, I guess, somebody flicked the wrong switch at the switchboard and our whole area of town was off. No electricity and uh, yeah, anyway, here I am and uh, just kind of been walking around my yard uh, praying. It was my prayer hour. Um, we have this 10 days of prayer before Pentecost and I'm really glad I'm part of this group because um, really just, um, I'm really just hoping that God stirs up an expectation or, or, or that I stir up an expectation in myself um, before Pentecost, just like the, the disciples, they had such an expectation for, for what was to come, uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. And so I've been walking around my yard praying and just uh, thought to myself, I'm a I think I'm a little bit numb this week. Uh, my emotions are a little bit tired and um, I don't quite know what to share with, with you guys. But I want to give you guys, just share something encouraging. I've been popping in on Mondays, Wednesdays and Fridays. And so I just want to share something just briefly with you guys tonight. And and um, just, um, just from a, a couple of events that happened today. But... Um, you know, I don't know if you've ever experienced it in your life, but but John ten ten says that the thief comes to, the thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, "But I have come that they may have life and have it to the full." So Jesus said those that the the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but he has come that we may have life, and life to the full. And maybe you're sitting here tonight and you've experienced both sides of that. You've experienced the life that Jesus gives you, life to the full. And you've also experienced that the enemy tries to kill, steal and destroy. And, um, and, and sometimes he, he, he gets it right. He, but um, but kill our, you know, Jesus um, said, do not worry about the one that can kill your physical body. It's the one who has your soul. And that's Jesus Christ. And the enemy cannot kill that, but he can take care of this body and years ago I experienced a, a, a super near-death experience that, that that whacked me only after I had um, after the whole incident happened I realized how close it was and and it was basically we went as a church we went to a prayer day in Soweto on June 16th and we were on our way back and there was two buses two church buses and I was driving the one and I, I'm always in a hurry to get home and um, we were at the Sassel on the N17 and I said to the one bus, oh, you guys are taking too long. We're just going. And as we, as we got back on the highway, I remember my father-in-law was sitting in the front with me and we watched this guy do a U-turn on the highway and it was kind of surreal. I was like, who does that? And just saw another car coming and just the two cars collided. I could not believe it happened in front of me. I just shouted, no, uh, when a Range Rover hits a Land Rover, there's a lot of um, engine parts and car parts lying all over the road. But I, I immediately jumped out the, the bus, pulled over, jumped out and ran over. And nobody was hurt in these two vehicles. They were all a little bit shook up. and But now it's dark and there's just two cars on the road. And we're kind of trying to stop the traffic and and make be as visible as we can because these two cars had no lights i mean that's how hard they hit each other and during the whole process a, cons a three guys coming back from a construction site stopped and they had all this reflective vests on and i thought this is so sweet that they were there to help and the three guys jumped out of their car and so it's hazards going everywhere and we walked down the street a little bit past the accident scene and, and some one of the guys from the construction vehicle was with me and he was a guy from Pakistan and never learned his name but we were walking and 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 we we're walking back towards the scene and I and he was said to me what happened here and I said you won't believe it I witnessed the whole thing and I started to tell him the story and at that moment a our other church bus that I had left behind pulled onto the highway and saw the accident and they pulled off behind our bus and I thought I have to run over and tell them not to get out of their vehicles. There's enough people on the road. And I basically took two or three steps away from this guy as I started to run across the road when I just saw a car come through and, and took the guy out that I'd just been talking to. I was probably between three and five meters away from him when this car just, I, I, I turned around and I looked and I just watched the guy fly through the air. It was one of the, you know, your brain just doesn't comprehend what's going on in that moment. And I, I carried on running to the bus. I said to them, don't get out the vehicles. And I ran back to this guy on the road just to, 
I'd never seen a guy hit by a car at 120 k's an hour and um, he was busy dying on the road and it, it, it was it was a really sad moment. I, I remember there was a few people from from the group Haniki Buta came out and she sat with the guy while he died and um, I went over to the other guy and I said to the, the main, the boss of these construction guys, I said, listen, your colleague is busy dying on the road. He's just been hit by the car. And I remember the guy looked at me and he, and he kind of looked at me weird. And um, anyway, he just didn't respond to me. And I thought, that's weird. Anyway, I got in. We, after the whole thing happened, I got into the bus and halfway home, I just realized how close I'd been. And um, I, I really didn't know how to deal with it anyway. Um, I wanted to find out about these construction guys. God laid it on my heart to find out how they're doing if their colleague died. And through the reporter, I, I looked up on the internet and found the reporter who had written the article about this guy that had died on the highway. And she she put me in contact with this guy. In fact, she gave me his Facebook page. She said, look on the Facebook page. You'll see a guy who's got a leopard as, the, as his profile pic. That's the boss. So anyway, I, I, I did, and I wrote to him, and uh, he wrote to me almost immediately and said, I cannot respond to you right now. I'm still in too much shock. This was about a week and a half, two weeks later, and I, um, it was about a week later when the guy wrote back to me, and, and he said the, the weirdest thing that, that, that shook my world for the second time after that accident. He said, you know what, I, I had a look at your profile, uh, your, your Facebook page, and um, you know the night that, that the accident happened, um, it wasn't you that came to tell me that a guy was hit on the side of the road. It was my colleague came to tell me. And when I went to look, the guy lying on the road was you. You were the one dying on the side of the road. He said, I, I see your face. It was you. It wasn't my colleague. And it kind of, that's what he saw. And in the process of, of trying to deal with this, I guess I realized that that night the enemy wanted to destroy me. And he wants to destroy each and every single one of us. And um. I'm sharing that story because I, I was talking to a guy on the phone from Australia today and uh, this guy phoned me out the blue. I haven't seen him since in 10 years. And uh, he said to me, Sheldon, this, this is not about a virus. This is, this is war. This is war. And, uh, and when he said it, I was like, you know what? I think he's right. I've been taking this virus a little bit lightly, you know, but this is war. If you have a look at what's going around, if the enemy wants to kill, steal, and destroy, that's what he's doing. This precious seed that Jesus died for, these people that he died for, he's trying to kill, steal, and destroy them. And and uh, and I just pray that when the dust settles after COVID-19, that what you see is the church on their knees, a church that is that is not defeated, a church that is that is that is making waves in God's kingdom for Him. That is, steal, that is taking back what the enemy is trying to dis, steal, kill, and destroy. You know, I said the other day that the, the scripture says um, that the gates of hell shall not prevail. And, and we need to storm those gates and take back what belongs to God. Those gates will not prevail. Those gates are put up to keep people inside, not to keep people out. And we need to go take back what's God's. And, and I pray that the church gets stirred up in this time, that we do not take it lightly, that we do not just wait for the dust to settle, but that when this dust settles, that we are on our knees fighting for God's people, that we are a church that is alive and well. And uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I've been reading uh, the media lately and and people think the church is quiet. The people think the church is dead. And most people are saying, oh, why is the church so excited that you're allowed to have 50 now? And, and I agree with them. Why are we suddenly excited that we can have 50 people in church on a Sunday? Why do we see that as a victory? What we should have been seeing is that people are saying, we have never seen the church more active like they have been now. You know, you go read in Acts when the church was persecuted and they scattered that is when the word of God went out. Because where they scattered to, they took the word of God. They didn't hide in a hole. They didn't hide in a cave. When they scattered, they took the word of God with them. And that's how the, the word spread. It was through a persecuted church. May this church that is, that is fighting in this time, where the enemy is trying to kill, steal, and destroy, may we not lie down. May we get on our knees. May we fight. May we stand up. I want to encourage you in this time. Um, to ask God to give you a vision because there is a future, to give you a vision for the future, to give you a heart for the lost and that we can come out of this thing fighting. The enemy will not kill, steal and destroy, not on my watch, 
And I pray that we all have that attitude. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to share that testimony because I just realized that the enemy, you know, he's, his plan is always to take Sheldon out. At some stage, he wants to kill, steal, and destroy me. And I see it in my life all the time. But you know what? I'm victorious because of Jesus Christ. And, um, and so are you. I love you guys. Have a great evening. I have no idea how long I spoke. Uh, but I'll catch up with you guys again. We have some exciting things coming up. We're going to have a prayer walk on on Sunday morning, if you if you don't know about it, maybe I can. Uh, it was put on Wellspring Communication. If you don't know about it, WhatsApp me and I'll tell you more about it. Um, Liesl, uh, we um, we're gonna have a prayer walk on Sunday morning uh, between eight and nine, and then get back into our houses, make a cup of coffee, and start some a church service. Uh, so it's gonna be great. I love you guys. You guys are awesome. Cheers.